Hey, what's up? This is Jerry Dixon of Warrant, and I'm blowing it up on Capital Chaos TV. Check it out. You are number 666. This is the Iron Serbian with Capital Chaos TV, and we have Jerry Dixon on the line from Warrant. Is Did I get your name right? You did. You got it. Nice. We're off to a we're off to a good start. And uh, Jerry Dixon, uh, Warren has a brand new brand new album, Louder, Faster, and Harder. Is that right? Uh, almost Louder, Harder, Faster. Oh, okay. Louder, Harder, Faster, and it's a great album. I love it. It sounds great. Uh, how do you like your new album? I think it's awesome, man. I think uh, I think it's a fun, you know, full full blown record that's that everybody should enjoy from beginning to end. Some of my favorite cuts on the album is the uh, the New Rebellion. Oh, New Rebellion, and I really like the ballad You and My Life. And uh, Oh, cool, cool. I want to thank you for doing ballads, because ballads are ballads are great, in my opinion. How do you feel about ballads? Uh, you know, it just uh, it depends on the mood. I, I tend to like the heavier stuff, but, you know, if I'm in a sappy mood, uh, you know. I it, it I like them. I like them. I got a soft spot in my heart, you know. So you were definitely the key component to the louder, harder, and faster part, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, how did you first get into rock? And did you ever like pop, funk, or punk? No, I. You know, I just uh, I always uh, I always was a rock guy. I started playing bass at thirteen and. Got into uh, you know Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden and Judas Priest were my my three bands that I loved growing up and uh, so I, I you know I just uh, gravitated towards that and uh, never never really got into much else. And how did you find those bands? Um, did somebody turn you on to them, or did your your parents have some records laying around, or? Yeah, usually uh, I had some cousins uh, that were a little bit older than me, and they they were like metalheads, so I would always hang out with them and, uh, you know, hang out, and, and they would, you know, turn me on to what their music that they had, and uh, that was about it, about the, just about those three bands. Do you remember the, the first song that you heard that had you going, whoa? Probably like Screaming for Vengeance was probably my, you know, was like, wow, that's, that's badass. And then I think the entire album of, of Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell, uh, was, you know, just something that was just, to me, it was just perfect. I'm like, God, this is, you know, this is so cool. I got to do this. It was all downhill from there. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. 30, 34 years later, here I am. And uh, my first instrument in school was a recorder. I don't know if you're familiar with that particular instrument. You have to blow into it. It's, it's a bit like yes. a... Did you, uh When you went to school, did you um, have to blow into one of those as part of a class? Uh, no, but I, I was in the marching band because they allowed me to play my bass in the classroom if I would march with the band. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Pretty pretty gay uh, marching, but uh, at least I got to play, you know, an hour a day for five days a week in band class. And then I guess it might have given you a, a performance bug, because clearly a marching band is a performance art. Yeah, yeah, not not really. I mean, marching band's not my thing, but uh, you know, like I said, I got to I got to play to pick up the bass in school, and I was like, all right. So it was a, it was a trade off, you know. And uh, what was the local scene like in the beginning uh uh for you and was there a, a particular band you aspired to be like? Not really. We you know, I think uh you know when you're being molded and starting out you, you know you're a little bit of everybody at the beginning. Uh but then after a while you just you know eventually you got to be yourself and uh you know, figure out who you are and what you want to do. And, uh, you know, back in the day, we were we were so busy doing our own thing that, uh, you know, we really didn't follow a lot of trends and things like that. We would just, 
we were just focused on what we were doing. And were you uh, writing original songs out the gate, or did you, uh, like a lot of us, learn cover songs and then, and sort of? No, you know what? I never did the, uh, I never did the cover song route because I was in Warrant when I turned 16, and we just played original music. What would you say the pros and cons of social media are, and the, the benefits and the negatives of, uh, say, a YouTube? Uh, well, it's a touchy subject. You know, I, I enjoy, I, I think there's a lot of benefits for, you know, having all your information in one spot. You know, for promotion reasons, it's perfect. It's great, but, you know, the the bad part is there's, there's so... You know, there's so many uh, lies and, you know, things that are written constantly by people. And, and, and people get off on that. You know, they get off on, you know, talking shit and bashing you and telling you you should die. And, you know, so there's a, right. you know, I guess it's the power of the pen. You know, we call them keyboard cowboys, you know, people that don't necessarily go to rock shows or warrant shows and, uh, live in 1989, you know, they, they find it fun to, you know, throw rocks at you online all the time. So that, that's the downside. But I would say, you know, for the most part, it's, it's a, it's a cool way to connect with fans and, you know, most of the, most of the stuff on there is, you know, pretty cool, but you know, you have to deal with the idiots. Yeah. They're sort of, sometimes they're hard to tune out. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you, it's definitely, uh, I find for me, if I'm not on there, I, my life is much better. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I don't have time for that shit. You know, I don't have all day to, you know, even, you know, even read the good stuff, but, you know, usually the the people on there, writing good stuff's not fun for them. And uh, this is CD number 10. It's been a while since uh, the prior uh, CD you put out. You're, you're like in no big hurry to put stuff out. Yeah, it just takes a long time to make a record you know it, it's most of the time is spent writing it and uh you know making sure you're comfortable with all the with all the stuff that's written and then you know actually recording and then putting it out the easy part but it just takes time and we don't we all live in different states now you know like i live in nevada and roberts and arizona and the other guys are in california so that that made it a little tricky this time how hard is it to uh, to nail down one cover song to do? Did you have a list of a hundred? No, the uh, I think I'll stay here and drink was actually uh, an idea that was presented to us by the PBR, the Professional Bull Riders. They uh, they're very uh, into rock and roll, and they wanted like a party anthem for this year. And uh, the CEO Sean Gleason actually hand-picked that song and you know, I wish I could take credit for it but it was his idea and he said what do you guys think about doing this song and and uh, I was familiar with the song and I was like you know what that's such a warrant song I think <laughs> I don't think that would be a stretch and uh, so uh, we, we uh, off we went and uh, it was uh, it was cool it turned out great and uh, you worked with uh, Jeff Pilson from Dawkin on this album. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff, uh, he produced the record, and, uh, you know, we went and recorded it at, at a studio in, uh, out in California, and uh, he's been great. He did a great job, and we were super happy uh, the way things turned out. What did he bring to the to the recording process as a producer. Well, you know, he just, you know, he's one of us. He's a musician. You know, he plays in Foreigner. He tours. So, you know, he just, he he got us right away and he got what we were trying to do. And, um, you know, just kind of reaffirmed what, what we thought was already cool. And, uh, you know, he just, uh, a, a good producer is just kind of like the quarterback of making a record. You know, if two or three guys have ideas, he's quarterback will be like, ah, let's go with idea B, you know. And it just, just helps you get to the point, helps you clean up the songs, and, 
you know, get to the choruses and, and, you know, just, just kind of really tidy the whole record up. And, uh, he was, he was really good at that. You know, he was, he did a great job and we got along with him really good. And I would have to say, uh, in my dreams is probably my favorite Dawkins song. Do you, are you a, fa- you have a favorite Dawkins track? Yeah. Yeah. I love, uh, I love that song. I love uh, Lightning is great. Yeah, man, it was uh, yeah, it was cool because we've known Jeff for a long time as well. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was cool. And uh, can we expect or have you done that I'm unaware of any album tours? Will it be a Cherry Pie tour or... Uh... Yeah, we're on the road now. We've, we've been out all year and uh, we're adding more dates as we go along. So uh, you, can, you can always go to wantrocks.com frequently and uh, look for new dates. We usually add dates like every day on that. And uh, how much of what we heard about and read about about the 80s was just PR nonsense? Uh, I think most of it was true, man. <laughs> yeah. it, was a, it was a hell of a time, you know? And how did you survive it? Because I've been to some funerals lately. Uh, I'm 51. I've been to some funerals lately of people that survived it somewhat and then didn't. Couldn't step away. Yeah, I, you know, I ask myself that quite, a, quite often. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how any of us uh, survived that, uh, that time, you know? But I, I think, you know, back then there was less pressure and less uh, you know, there was no terrorism or social media or fucking cameras and texting and just, you know, all the bullshit that we have now is, uh, you know, it, it was just a time where you could just go out and have a good time. So if, if we were going to, if we're going to screw our bodies up, that was the time to do it. <laughs> and I, I guess, yeah. I guess moderation is probably something that you're familiar with. Uh, now, yeah, not not back then. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> nowadays, yes, you know, can't you don't hold up as good as you did when you were, you know, sixteen. And uh, depression. How do you? Um, we I think we all suffer from a little bit of depression. How do you? Um, how do you deal with depression? Uh, I have actually take medicine. Believe it or not, I have depression, <laughs> and. Uh, I have some a wonderful effector that I've been on for a long time. If you, if you must know, I don't think anybody knows that, but now you do. You know, it's, it's depression. I, I think with, especially in this business, you know, with me, I have a lot of super highs and a lot of super lows. So I think it's just, you know, I think all of us are a work in progress and uh, you just have to, you got to find a happy place in the medium in the middle, I mean, and just, um, you know, not try and get too high and too hopped up on yourself when things are going good. And uh, also when they, you know, when shit collapses, you got to learn not to beat yourself up, you know? And have you, uh, have all the uh, the Warrant songs been played live? Are there any uh, Warrant songs that have not been played live? No, that's, uh, we have played every everything we've ever done live at least once and um do you read reviews do you visit um metal sites rock sites to f- to find out you know the latest home purchase um you know i i don't i just uh i think i just overloaded on the internet and uh, there's just like a weird there's just too much information for me and you know a lot of it's you know a lot of it's just you know, just people's opinions about everything, and I've got my opinion. So, I you know, me personally, I know the other guys in the band are active on social media and read interviews and stuff like that. But I, I just find that you know, if I just focus on on doing what I do and my part, and and I don't get you know pissed off or I don't get too pumped up on myself for the good things, and. Uh, I just try and not, that's just me personally, try and, try and steer clear of that stuff. Cool, cool. And finally, have you, uh, have you ever been arrested from a warrant? Uh, I 
you know, I've almost been arrested a few times, but never, uh, never, never got arrested. Believe it or not, I've always, I've always slid out of it somehow. <laughs> ah. you get the heads up. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time out to uh, talk with us. Is there anything uh, um, that you'd like to say before you wrap this up? Um, no, maybe just uh, you know put put warrant rocks in the warrantrocks dot com for all things warrant. And if people want to come out and see the show or check out the new record, all the information is on like uh, warrantrocks dot com. <laughs>